This video continues from the previous one, Building a Beat, and we'll be using the song that was created and saved during that video. If you don't have a copy of that song, you can download it from the download section of the Renoise website or directly with the link in this video's description. So using the disk browser, navigate to where you've stored the song and double click on it to load it in. We've already created a basic beat and now it's time to enhance the various drum sounds by adding effects. But first, let's learn about muting tracks so we can hear the changes more easily. Press spacebar to play the song and move the mouse pointer to where it says play under one of the tracks. Left clicking here will mute the audio coming from this track and left clicking again will unmute it. Right clicking will solo this track which mutes all of the others so that only the audio from this track is heard. And right clicking again will unmute the other tracks. So let's solo the kick track and make sure the track is selected by clicking on it or moving the cursor into it with the keyboard like we learned in the last video. Now let's add an effect using the effects list at the bottom left corner of the interface. If you don't see this list, then select this icon to open it. Scroll down to distortion and double click on it to add it to the track. Play the song and mess around with the settings to get a feel for what they do. If you unmute the other tracks with a right click, you can hear that the distortion is applied only to the kick track. This is one of the main reasons that different sounds are put into different tracks. Okay, we want something that gives a bit more punch, but not enough to alter the character of the original sound. So set mode to razor, drive to 10%, and tone to 0%. And remember, you can use the slider, or click and type a value, or when using the arrow buttons, left click changes by a little, and right click by a lot. You'll find the bottom two parameters on quite a few of the effects. The wet mix is the amount of distorted sound after the kick has been run through this effect, and the dry mix is the amount of the original sound without any distortion applied. Altering these parameters allows for the overall sound to be balanced however you want. Let's set them to minus 6 and 0. Now we'll move on to the snare track. Solo it with a right click and move the cursor into the track by left clicking on it. Play with spacebar and it sounds a bit flat so adding reverb would be a good idea here. The initial values sound good, but a bit loud, so reduce the wet mix to minus 6. If you want to compare how the snare sounds with and without the reverb, then use the tick box here, which enables and disables the effect. And this is something that every effect has. Add a distortion device and we'll make use of a couple of other features that every effect has. Click where it says init, which stands for initial values, and you'll bring up a list of presets. Choose drums mid cut, and move the device left and right in the effect chain with the arrow buttons. The other two buttons here minimize the device, giving you more space, and delete the device from the effect chain. Anyway, as you can hear, the order that the effects are in changes the sound. 
The reason for this is that the original sound comes from the notes in the pattern editor and starts its way through the track's effect chain from left to right. First is the premixer, which every track has and controls various things like volume and panning before any of the effects are applied. The audio then moves through each effect one at a time until it reaches the post mixer, which is found at the end of every track. This controls the final volume and panning after all of the effects have been applied. In this example, when the distortion is first in the chain, it is applied to the original sound and then this distorted sound is given some reverb. But when moved to the right, the distortion is applied to both the initial sound and the echoes of that sound that the reverb creates. So let's have the distortion first and bring back more of the original sound by raising the dry mix value up to zero decibels. This has made the snare quite a bit louder than the other drum sounds. We could fix this by reducing the wet and dry mix values, but I like the balance that's already in place, so instead change the post mixer volume to minus three decibels. To finish up, let's add some simple effects to the other two tracks. Click on the hi-hat track and insert a flanger. Choose Wanderer from the preset menu and reduce the amount value to 50%. Move to the cymbal track and give it a bit more body with some reverb. The default settings will work fine. And that's it. There's a lot of other native effects you can use, so be sure to play around with them and check out the online manual for more information. Track effects are a quick and easy way to alter the sound of instruments, though you can make them very complex if you wish, depending on how you chain them together. There are also a couple of other ways to add effects and renoise, which we'll be covering in future videos. <laughs>